<laughs> I did have a question. When I was watching the show and you were using so many big words, it just blew my mind. I was like, man, I, I studied like biochemistry myself and I didn't even know what you were talking about. Did you even know what you were talking about? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the real question. Um, thank you for noticing my big words. Um, it, it, was, it's, it, it doesn't always come easily to me, so um, uh, I learn a lot when I uh, learn those lines. Do you guys ever work closely with the writers, or do they hang out with you and try to pick your brain on what words would They come to say, it's funny though, because yeah. you know, I, I had like one or two days at the beginning where I did pretty well with those big words, mm -hmm. and, I just then, and then all of a sudden you get like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. Right? <laughs> you know, like one or two good days at the beginning of like, you know, of, of getting it right, then all of a sudden they were like, Oh, he could do that. So like, there'd be like three, three more pages in the next one. I was like, oh, you know, and, and turn to spelling bee. Well, one of the things that I really like about uh, one of the things that happened this year was uh, there's an actress named Shauna McDonald uh, this year who's playing um, Dr. Zelaznova Bordakovskaya. Can't spell that for you, um, but she plays. Uh, she works with Price in the Tower, and so we have these excellent interactions. And Shauna, they wanted her to be Russian, and Shauna speaks perfect Russian, like a like a native. Mm -hmm. Um, so she was able to really work with the writers a lot about, you know, translating a lot of her dialogue and stuff. And so in one of the first scenes that we have together, she's, she was speaking back and forth in Russian. And I'm just kind of walking along nodding and then she gave me a line in Russian at the end. So that just in passing, I kind of respond in Russian we go on. And that sort of sprouted this idea that like, isn't that funny that Price just seems to understand what she's saying. And so then they wrote me a scene later where like I'm, I have a line in Arabic and like just this idea that and it's never commented on, but I, I just love that sense of collaboration too, that, and, and that weirdness, that feeling of like, no matter what you're speaking in, Price knows what you're talking about, which I thought was like a fun little character thing that came up out of that kind of collaboration. Do you have a scene for the new season that you really enjoyed filming, one that kind of stands out for you that you think people are really gonna like? I really like dunking my head in the bathtub a lot. <laughs> I really like it when you dunk your head in the bathroom. <laughs> I really like it when she dunks her head in the bathroom. <laughs> you know, can, can we answer that question for this, the other people? I mean, Dia won't be able to answer mine because she doesn't read my scenes, apparently. Oh, but I, I can tell you. Um, the bathtub scene for you is great. Um, there's a great scene uh, that the sheriff has with the bishop um, later on in the scene that, that I, yeah. I love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and a great, really bizarre, chilling scene that he has with Norman that ends an episode um, mm -hmm. that is so creepy and mm -hmm. weird. Um, it's I actually I know. really, sorry, oh, no, can I just say that yeah. I really liked the eating the, when um, Roman eats the, um, the <laughs> that's, that's what exactly what we call it, that's what we call it, the, it's called, the, the, <laughs> yeah. um, what are they called? They suck blood. The leeches? Leeches! <laughs> I thought that was cool, man. That was creepy and weird, and yeah. you, I've never seen it before. Yeah. You know, I thought that was, that's a really cool scene. Yeah, the, the, I know exactly what Joel's talking about, and, you know, unfortunately the, the content, I think, remains to be seen and experienced by, by the audience, but, but I think the audience, when watching, they'll know when they get to those scenes. I don't know, describe the chemistry um, on set with everyone versus on um, season two versus season one. How has it changed? How has things kind of coalesced into each other? Well, clearly we hate each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, help, it helps so much when you, when you like the people that yeah. you're working with. Yeah. Going to work is so much fun. And then even all of the new people who've been introduced in, in the second season are all just so sweet and amazing and yeah. bring something new and yeah I, I loved going to work I, I, I was a little bummed in terms of uh, in that way coming coming to the show towards the end of season one because I I arrived and arrived with with all of this sort of cohesion and camaraderie that everyone right. else was experiencing and and it's it's just like anything else it just takes time to to, to join a family or to, to be grafted mm -hmm. into a family so uh, where I'm sitting now uh, Totally love it and resonate with these. With it's these such a wild out. ride that you kind of have to enjoy everybody's mm -hmm. company that you're on the ride with. <laughs> I mean, it helps to for me. It helps that if to to be not 
uh, well liked and to have my character misunderstood and not well liked in the world mm -hmm. it's very helpful to me to really like the people I'm around so I can behave appropriately you know like where I feel comfortable playing with them in the way where you know I can I can be cruel you know in a playful way with them as opposed to you know having to manifest that self in a more hostile environment perhaps that's a good point how's the fan reaction been that you guys have experienced to the first season now people are getting ready for the second season I think our fans are great mm -hmm. um, especially you know like there there's a really loyal contingency on, on Twitter and mm. I think Netflix uh, has been really wonderful you know there's so many people coming to the screening that we're having tonight and uh, it's a great way for you know the show to interface with the people that that really like the show you know it's it's a, it's a good relationship to foster I was just honored that people wanted to see more of my character you know I mean I wanted to see more of my character but I just I was glad that other people wanted to see you know where she would go and and just get to know get to know more about her yeah mm -hmm. it's nice that they want to see more um, <clears throat> earlier, Fafa was saying that she's really squeamish around gore, horror movies, so just curious, uh, how would you characterize uh, each of your relationships with the genre, with horror? Oh, <laughs> for me, I didn't, I wasn't raised, like, I wasn't raised watching, my, some of my friends, oh, did you see It, the Clown, the, you know, that movie, or Friday the 13th, all of those things, I never used to watch that, but I was allowed to watch, um, Silence of the Lambs and Seven and all of those kind of movies. For some reason, I was allowed to watch that, you know. So I, I, um, I can I, I love the genre in that sense, the thriller, the mystery. Um, but I, I wasn't really into the the gore stuff until later in my life, you know. And and, and also because of the way that my career has gone, I just happen to get a lot of this strange stuff <laughs> but it's fun i love the i love the genre because there's so much room to play there's so like where are you going to go next you know that's a great way to put it it gives you a lot of places to play it's it's fun it's if it were real life it would be ter terrifying but <laughs> the fact that we get to play it's, it's sort of like what makes you want to be an actor yeah to begin with like you're running around and getting to be like a mad scientist you're getting mm -hmm. to be like the sheriff trying to find the answer or getting mm -hmm. to be like the fortune teller mystic psychic you know i mean these are things that you know, and you have a, an amazing team behind you that make it look real and amazing. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like you get, you're getting to play like a kid with all the cool toys, though. You know, it's like the equivalent of holding like a lightsaber or something like that. You know? I feel like for myself, I, I really, uh, really enjoy uh, all the genres uh, that exist. And I think for me, what that points to is, is just, I just love, I love to perform. I love what we do mm -hmm. in, in whatever context it is because I think in terms of, uh, of the audience uh, we're all we're all human and there's a universality to to being human we all have uh, I think a desire for meaning we have a desire for connection for intimacy for belonging uh, and all of those things are are universally dispersed throughout throughout all genres so um, it's an interesting question but I always find my head and I think I'm refining it every time that it's asked you know, why it is that my head kind of glitches and I'm just like well <laughs> you know I kind of like it I love, I love it all yeah, well, yeah yeah exactly yeah. we all do any genre yeah. I just love doing what, I, yeah. what we do yeah obviously you guys couldn't predict the popularity of the show but what first initially attracted you guys to, to the script when you guys read it for season two or season, season one, one uh -huh. initially uh, I, I loved that I got to play a gypsy I think gypsies are awesome and I thought it was a really cool take on the vampire, werewolf, um, I guess, genre, or, you know, the, the kick everyone's on with the whole vampire werewolf thing lately. I thought it was a really cool uh, take on that, mm -hmm. and I was attracted to the fact that I got to um, be a gypsy and a witch, and yeah, I have, I have so much fun with her. I was really... Uh... I found the relationship between Peter and Roman would just be so compelling and sort of original. Like, I mean, certainly, mm. certainly in the states, you know, you don't often see like a show that focuses on like, um, you know, two young men like that who care about each other, like in the way that they cared about each other. Uh, in in kind of like a, I mean, for two young men, 
to portray that in a non-ironic way, just at the, you know, and you know, watching them how they they have trouble dealing with how they feel about each other too a lot of the time. I thought that was so interesting and cool, and the fact that they're both uh, that one's a vampire and one's a werewolf is even better. Like it was, but you know, you have all these trappings around a story that pretty much comes down to like it's sort of like a it's like a family drama, like The Godfrey. It's it really is. It's about this family or the romantics. It's like it's it's these families and things are going wrong between them and how they're dealing with it, but they all happen to, on the outside anyway, be monsters, so. Well, how multifaceted it is, you know, just the, the various players that are involved and how, how the, you know, their various intentions ebb and flow and intertwine, and, uh, and just the grit. I felt like even just kind of reading the script and, and, and not, just, not just the gore and wondering how that would be, uh, how that would be done or executed, part of the pun. Um, uh. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, just uh, there was almost kind of a kind of an elegance about it as well that I that I kind of picked up off the page. Do you have any idea where you'd like to see your characters go in season three? Because you're all living. Just, yeah, we'll just make that comment <laughs> up front. Um. For now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see I episode eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see my character um, and her relationship develop with Andreas and also her background. Where, what was the journey that brought her where she is now? Why is she living by herself on top of a, a weed store? <laughs> yeah, right? You know, what, what brought her there? I'm interested. I want to know, you know? I mean, I have my own ideas, but yeah, I would like to see where, where she's... Where she's from. <laughs> uh, certain things uh, th that I've been pursuing for a long time, really season one and season two, sort of come to a conclusion in season two. So I'm, I'm curious about what happens now that Project Ouroboros has sort of happened, and then what happens now with my relationships, both with Roman and with Olivia, which are in very particular places, like at the end of season two. I think it'll be interesting to see. Um, I think Michael is, is somewhat of a he's somewhat of a loner. Uh, somewhat, yeah. <laughs> Probably understand it. It'll be interesting to see who he allies with, if anyone, uh, whether he is uh, able to trust to the extent that. Perhaps he needs to in order to accomplish what it is that he's trying to accomplish. Um, for that matter, I think it'll be interesting to see how that happens with, with all the characters. Uh, there's a way in which everything that they are trying to accomplish can't be done on their own. Um, so I think that'll be, that'll be very interesting. And uh, I'd like to see that happen. And I'd also like to see uh, how Michael's quest either makes him or breaks him. Because it has, I think it has, it has one resolution or the other, mm -hmm. and it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. I think I want to also see my character interact with like, your character, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. and Olivia and everybody else. <laughs> Maybe we can have like a Christmas episode where like it's, it's sort of like outside the rules a little bit, where like we yeah. meet at like Starbucks or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm ordering a Starbucks coffee, and oh, this is yours. This is for you. <laughs> I'm actually interested to see a, a scene between our characters yeah. as well, uh, mm -hmm. just because there, there's, to me, there's something that's kind of similar about them. There's a, there's a, uh, there's like a, a restrained aggression that they both have that I'm, I, I don't even know how that would play in a scene. Uh, whether that'd be fun, or, man. Friends or foes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's very possible that, yeah. we, that that's coming. Yeah. 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 Do you see your character masterminding any, um, or the future of the company and the show in, in some ways? Because it seems like he's kind of taking some control. At the he's quite territorial yeah. about the tower. And so, I, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's the next, you know, I'm curious to see where that goes. I mean, I, you know, it would be, it would be unusual to find him anywhere else. So, yeah, I think, I think he's, he's going to dig in. It's nice and warm in the tower in the middle of December. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> yeah. It suits me very nicely. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, you need some wood scenes. <laughs> we were just standing in the other room. It said maker just, I don't think I have any scenes outside in season two. That was like me in the first season. I never left my apartment. Time. See, but you do see me in my pajamas twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what is up with that sleeping mask that... Uh, you're going to have that, to talk to somebody else about that. Marty Roth sleeping mask. Yeah, I, you know, that's where I get my superpowers, actually. Um, no, I, it was uh, originally, as that was written, actually, uh, it, was ri it was written originally as Price is in bed, he's got a sleep mask on, and he's surrounded by a dozen cats. Like, that was, that was the original conceit. And I'm allergic to cats, mm -hmm. so um, I was like, well, look, we can maybe get ones that, you know, there are certain cats that are, you can be not allergic to, I guess. But I think it was too much of a problem. So, but the idea that they were thinking of me as like a cat person, I thought was very interesting. Cool. Um, I'm glad to let that one go. <laughs> and do you have any like ideas for what sort of projects Price could like have in the works? I mean, uh, we were talking to um, Madeline about uh, Shelley, and she was like, "Oh, I think she's a good boyfriend." Do you think yeah. <laughs> Yeah, made to order. Make it happen. <laughs> sure, make, 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 like made to order partners. <laughs> uh, there's been a lot of talk about um, pretty much any character that uh, that dies that, that people like, they sort of want to send them through the tower. So I, I hear a lot about maybe Clementine's alive in the tower somewhere, or maybe Leith is alive in the tower somewhere, and, or maybe there's some weird amalgamation of them both. You know. Um, regarding all the mythological creatures that the show incorporates, if we could play um, like fantasy wish fulfillment for a second, uh, if you could pick like a power to have, what do you think would be like really useful in general? For our yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, for for like your own life, if oh. you could take something from the show and just oh. have it yourself, right here and right now. I would love the power to snap my fingers and be on the other side of like what's that called? Uh, teleportation. I would love to do that because I grew up, uh, my dad lived in one city, my mom lived in another city. So as I was in the car, like going back and forth, I was like, if I could have power, that's what it would be. So I, was, I actually thought long and hard about that question for a while. And living in LA too, you could bypass all the traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I like Price's super strength. Like, I, I like to kind of explore that more, see what that's all about. Okay. I'd like. Um, <laughs> that sounds great. Thank you. Uh, the ability to uh, to heal people, to heal them not only physically but um, emotionally well as well. Because I think uh, I think so much of what we encounter in the world that we would probably all agree at the table if we were to talk about the various things happening in the world, a lot of it happens as a result of people acting out of their past and out of their out of their hurts and their wounds. Um, so I, I can't help but think to be able to, to just touch someone or will someone health. That's so nice. Uh, I'm like that. so selfish. Yeah. <laughs> well, now I'll be there quicker. <laughs> I had no idea. Tony said, but you are selfish. <laughs> but he can make you feel better about it, yeah. so it's okay. <laughs> Uh, and go to different places around the world. Yeah, and there then you go. Yeah, so then I can touch hands. people and then I teleport. Okay, yeah. Okay. And I'll just be the person that's like, you can, I'll throw you up there. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the Wonder Twins. Like Their powers are so useless. Like the one that can be like an ice bucket or something. That's a terrible power. So I know you guys don't really get scenes <coughs> together. Um, who is the person who you really enjoy having scenes with? Like, what character do you find the most fun to play against? I love... Working with, I love uh, Destiny and Peter, obviously, um, but I also love the dynamic with Destiny and Andreas. I love working with him. He's such a talented actor, and um, just the casting. My God, the it's casting is so great, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would love yeah. to. Great question. But I mean, I hardly like most of my interaction is with Peter and is with Andreas, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I don't true. really have a, a, I love working with both of them. I never interact with really anybody else besides, um, yeah. besides Peter's mother. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, it's hard, again, because uh, truly the, uh, everyone's so stinking talented. Um, but if I think from a, just in terms of a dynamic, um, I 
I think some uh, some of the interactions that um, the audience will see with, with myself and, and Dugray um, are interesting. Um, I enjoy playing with uh, with Landon and Bill as well. Uh, there's a way in which there there's a sense of antagonism that exists with with those two that is a bit different with Dugray. And so it, it, it kind of opens up sort of a dimension with Dugray that uh, uh, you get to just sort of draw from different colors on the palette where Michael's concerned in a different way than, than I do thus far with, uh, with Bill and Landon. Uh, I really like the, you know, because I have a lot of two-person scenes and um, they're always so fun regardless of who the person is with. Um, you know, working with Bill is really fun, but and Dugray is hilarious because his character hates my character so much that there's so much fun to play because I'm always like, hello, Norm, and he's like, you cunt, and you're like, oh, here we go. <laughs> but I think the, the scenes where I have like the most range to play things with is with Fanka, you know, especially this season. Uh, it's just been, we've had such a good time together. I think also because we've been freed to a certain extent of the limp, like, we had a very particular mysterious relationship in season one, which was, you know, a lot of fun to do. But second season, I think they, because of the things that have happened to Olivia's character, she's been freed to start behaving in all these ways that I've never seen her behave like before. So, you know, a lot of, you know, um, I think some funny things ensue because of that, because she's acting so out of character, you know, and uh, that's been a lot of fun. It's been fun to, to watch Fonka get to be playful in that way. Cool. Well, thank you. Uh, you can last question. Oh. Yeah. I was going to ask, uh, how much more sinister do you think the show is going to become if you know, it keeps going in this direction? That's a good question. Sinister. That's dark. That's interesting. I think it, it, it's um, the same question, well, question wasn't asked uh, earlier, but uh, your response was, was interesting. It, it, there's a way in which I think anyone, whether it's a character we're portraying or in in our lives, uh, in the world that we live in, that no one thinks they're they're bad or no one is uh, evil in their own mind. Everyone is doing what they think they need to do in order to get what what they think is reasonable for them to have. Um, which I'm realizing probably isn't exactly your question. Um, my head's trying to figure it out because in some ways I, uh, I have to pull apart that notion that, that none of the characters are, are sort of sinister in their own right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for myself and playing Michael, um, or even as I observe a lot of the other characters, mm -hmm. it's important uh, for me, at least the way that I approach, approach the work that I do to, uh, to not sort of project that onto you know, any given character. Otherwise, I'm unable to empathize. Right. It denies me access to certain aspects of that that uh, that character's experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I have not answered your question. <laughs> <laughs>